This is the plaintiff, Melvin Stewart. He says he rented an apartment from the defendant, and he was a very accommodating landlord and everything was fine until he gave the defendant his three months notice. The sneaky guy turned on him, refused to give him back his security, even though he left the place in great condition. And he's suing for his $1,200, which has been unlawfully withheld. This is the defendant, Bill Yang. He says the plaintiff said he was moving out, but then kept telling him his new place wasn't ready yet, and he delayed the next tenant he had lined up by months. He had to give the new tenant a rent rebate because she was getting mad. He's the one who lost money, and he has every right to use the plaintiff's security to recoup the loss. He's accused of holding on tight. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that he wants his money back from the defendant because the guy is withholding it illegally uh, and has absolutely no right to keep it. But the defendant says he's the one who's out the money due to the plaintiff's unscrupulous ways. It's the case of, I want my jack, man. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Stewart, you used to rent an apartment from Mr. Yang, correct? That is correct. All right, and you're suing today because Mr. Yang has kept your security deposit. Tell me what happened towards the end of your rental. There were some complications I'd like to discuss. I had um, listed for a senior citizen's apartment. And when the due date became available, unfortunately, the apartment was not available. So I let Mr. Yang know that there was indeed a complication and I, I had originally planned to move out in December. And I asked, I told him that I would like to stay until January if it was indeed possible. And um, I paid the rent for January and I thought that was all at an end. However, uh, when I reached back to him months later to uh, request my deposit, he said that I had inconvenienced him and as a result of that, his new tenants, he had to put in, up in an apartment, I don't know, on a hotel or something like that. But I just felt that was not my responsibility. All he had to do was say yes or no, and I would have gotten out. Right. Mr. Yang, let me hear from you. Yes, uh, Melvin Stewart is correct. He's moving out uh, at the end of November. So uh, he didn't say end about of moving out. At the, right. Even though the letter, the mobile letter say December the 1st, so assuming that's the end of the November. And, but he didn't say he's going to move out at the uh, January. He just kept saying that the, the apartment is being delayed. We need more, more days to stay. So I said, okay, no problem. The, my new tenant is already accommodated also. For, for the whole December, my new tenant didn't complain. Okay, and, but let me ask you a question. Most, so you had a new tenant lined up for December? Yes. And did you have a lease with that new tenant or was it a month to month? At least two years lease. Now, when he kept delaying his departure, you kept telling the new tenant, oh, we can't start yet, we can't start yet. And at some point, according to you, the new tenant got angry. And tell me what happened with the new tenant. Yeah, at the end of the, almost the end of the December, the new tenant sent me uh, the message that uh, if she moving at, in the month of January, Every day, delay it. Uh, I need to uh, uh, compensate her uh, about thirty-three dollars per day. That's okay, why, uh, compensate also we her. Her. Hold on one second. Was she paying? She, but she didn't pay rent in January. She wanted you to pay the rent amount to her. No, even though to, she uh, wasn't but, paying. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's, as uh, like a penalty, penalty because it's being delayed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. So amount. let me ask you a question. Mr. Stewart, is it accurate that you were supposed to leave December 1st, then it was later in December, then all of a sudden it became, like, it, it did evolve a few times. It wasn't just one delay once, it was several delays, wasn't it? No, it was not several delays, Your Honor. I, my lease was from January 1st nine, uh, of 19 until December 31st. Of That's right, December, but you uh, had negotiated to leave at the end of November. Jan no, you had no, no, negotiate. No. I... Wait, wait, wait. You negotiated with your landlords to let you out a month early, correct? No. Because you thought the place would be ready. No, that's not so. 
Okay. I had advised him that my the apartment would not be ready, and I wanted to know if I would be able to stay in January. And he said yes. Okay. I paid now the I rent see texts from him to the just a second. Mm-hmm. Then why would he turn around and rent it out in December? I have no idea. If you were still going to be there. That doesn't make any sense. Plus, I see texts from him to the new tenant saying, sadly, my tenant just told me he should be able to move out by the 29th. And she responds, okay, that's progress. So, no, she wasn't supposed to start renting from January. She was supposed to start renting from December. Thank you for letting me know. Then he texts her on December 27th. Sadly, my tenant told me that he went to the management office today to inquire about the move-in intentions for next Monday, but was told that due to the holidays, the apartment remodeling is not fully furnished. He needs to wait till after New Year to inquire about the possible move-in date. I am very sorry for keeping you waiting. And then he offers to her, I'll deduct 100 from your first month's rent to compensate you. Hopefully, my current tenant is able to move out before the end of January. He will let me know early next month. And then she responds on January 1st, good morning and happy new year. Thank you for telling me. As you know, I was really looking forward to moving in before the year was over. For every day that I'm not moved in for the month of January, I should be compensated for the value of rent not just a flat rate of $100. I would need an updated lease as well. However, this can all be discussed when you have a final date. Happy New Year, he answers. All righty, we will discuss your compensation when I heard back from my current tenant regarding his move out date this month. Mr. Yang, did you ever discuss with Mr. Stewart? Yeah, I'll take January rent, because you got paid for January rent, right? Yes. From Mr. Stewart, right. So he paid for January rent and he wants his security deposit back. If you don't want to pay it back because Miss Kenya decides, you know what? If I can't move in, then you pay me rent. And you say, oh, okay, I'll discuss it with the, ter- with the tenant. Did you ever discuss it with Mr. Stewart? Yes, I, uh, we sent a message to uh, Mr. Uh, Stewart. Can I see that message? Okay, let me see that message because you did not. Well, how did you get these texts, but not the one that matters to prove your case? I need that one. The uh, one where he says, okay, there's a penalty and agrees to it. That's the one I need. Because uh, that know. one is the one that has you winning your defense. So how did you find all these texts, but not the texts you sent him? Uh, this text, I uh, asked my tenant to uh, we send it back to me, taking an email, sending it okay. back to me. It's not on my phone. So why, why is it you couldn't get the text you need to prove your, the defense? Because what? Yeah, because uh, my cell phone, when my, uh, my daughter was playing it, he, she dropped off to the toilet, and the phone is damaged. Uh, I cannot turn it on. Okay, but you could always go to the phone company and get your text, the transcript of your text. Mr. Stewart, did you agree to pay a penalty for staying there in January? Absolutely not. Right. How are you going to prove that now? Furthermore, if you're laying claim to his security deposit for a penalty, New York law requires now that you give the tenant an explanation within 14 days of his departure, ask an itemized list of why you're keeping the, the security deposit. Did you do that? Uh, no, I do not know. Yeah, you got to know that. You need to look into that because you have to do that with every tenant you have from now on. Okay? So no. for those very mighty reasons that... Um, There is no evidence that you can show me that Mr. Stewart agreed to paying double rent in January and also for the reason that you did not send the uh, the notice within 14 days about laying claim to the security deposit. I have to order you to return Mr. Stewart's $1,200. Verdict for the plaintiff, $1,200. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you. So the plaintiff is going to get his money back, his security, the $1,200 back. Mr. Yang, you heard the judge. You missed two key things, legal issues that caused you to lose. You understand? Yes. All right. Well, as a landlord, you you really got to take a lot of a lot of pay a lot of attention to that. It could happen again in the future if you don't do it. Mr. Stewart, I guess you're happy that you filed the lawsuit. Otherwise, you might not be getting this, right? Absolutely. But you know, I want to also say that Mr. Yang is a a wonderful man, and I I really didn't want to go this length. He was an excellent landlord, and um, it just was very troubling when I got that response from him that he would not be returning it. But, you know, all's well that ends well.
All's well that ends well. That's a good way to put it. All righty, that'll bring this case to a close with the plaintiff winning the suit for $1,200. Looks like there was just a failure of proof here by the defendant landlord in the sense he really couldn't demonstrate or prove to convince you that there was an agreement for double rent. Right, because that's in essence what it is. And the New York security deposit law, which is tenant friendly and uh, requires the landlord to quickly get that letter out within 15 days if they're going to withhold anything. He certainly didn't 14, comply. 14 days. That's what you've got to crank out an explanation of why you're keeping it yeah. uh, and itemize why. And that's but, strictly complied with one, yeah. one way or the other, right? But the, it, w the, the strange part is that if, if, if you reach an agreement with somebody that they have to pay double rent, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, that's kind of unusual. You better have that in writing. You better right. have some proof of it. Right, and he had nothing. Right, so I think you, it's one, you get one day in court and you got to bring the proof. You either have the goods or you don't. And in this case, he just didn't have it. He didn't have an email. He didn't have a letter. He didn't have notes. He didn't have a re voice recording. He had nothing to really back it up. Right? Well put. Chris wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, my stove doesn't work, and I've asked the landlord to repair it. What's a reasonable time to wait before I hire a repairman on my own and then take it out of the rent? It's a great question. It's a great question. Uh, there is no particular time in the law. It depends on how bad the problem is. If it's heat, it has to be fixed faster, say, than something that's just kind of a, a bonus in the apartment. When you're talking about a stove, that's essential because you can't cook without it. I would just argue a week or so, but that is rough and there's no magic number. 